not one o'clock, more like 10 after one o'clock, and I am so very sorry. Um, YouTube decided to protect me today, and so I had to multiple times reset my password and do all of the things there. So um, it was less than handy, so I am so sorry for being late. Uh, anyway, I hope that some of you <laughs> hung in there for a second. Um, I was busy telling folks that uh, I was busy trying to get on versus trying to tell people uh, what was going on. So, any hooch, I am so sorry for the delay. All right, so here's a card I've got. Hey, Bree, appreciate you joining, and uh, I am sorry to be late. Hi, Debbie. So this is the card I've got for you today. It's uh, It uses the wondrous Sweet as a Peach bundle, which is gorgeous. It's a photopolymer set, so you can um, do lots of fun things with it. And it has a peach dye, which has actually 17 dyes in it. Lots of little leaves and flowers. And it also cuts out the stamped images. And of course, I've also used some of the uh, Sweet as a Peach, Your Peach DSP. Hi, Danette. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Victoria. Hi, Cynthia. Appreciate you joining. All right, so I've done a little pre-cutting and a little not pre-cutting because I kind of want to show you the coloring um, technique that I've used on this card. So here's the front of it. You can see it's got some texture. That's from the macrame 3D embossing folder. And then on the inside, it's got a Georgia peach and a thank you sentiment. And then we, of course, have, this is some of the prettiest paper in the Europe Peach DSP. Don't you just love it? It's glorious. Hello, Glenda. Hi, Jeanne. Hi, Marianne. Hi, Kim. Hey, Rosie. Nope, you did not have trouble finding me. YouTube, um, YouTube, which is apparently an affiliate of Google, and Google rules the world, and it has decided that a password had been compromised, so it just logged me out of everything. I thought it was it was completely awesome. I loved every second of the fight that I just went through. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I've got some things already cut, and we'll do a little bit of adhering and things like that, just so that we can get moving along. All right, this is my piece of the uh, Euro Peach DSP, and I am going to adhere it to an early espresso mat. Now this card front and mat is a little bit bigger than usual for me. So instead of being a four inch by five and a quarter, this is four and one eighth by five and three eighth. And this is uh, commensurately, commensurately larger. And part of that is so that when I made my little design, I didn't have to do math. Okay, so what I did to create my f card front, you can see this is four equally sized strips of basic white that I've embossed in the um, macrame embossing folder. So to make that, I started with a three and seven eighths inch wide tall panel, and it's five inches wide. And then I cut it into four one and one quarter inch <laughs> wide strips. Then what I did is I placed all of the strips right next to each other as if it was still cut or still it was still solid. I put them right together and I embossed it in the embossing folder. Now, I did that because first off, it's a lot easier to cut cardstock before you emboss it if you can. Okay, now I know I've told you in the past, I want you to emboss and then cut. And if you're trying to make something that's very that's really important that it be square on all the corners because you're matting it, then I think that's still the better way to do it. On smaller pieces like this, I kind of like doing the embossing afterwards. So what I did is I've pre-dimensionalized everything here, okay? And then I um, I actually n numbered them or, you know, lettered them depending on how you look at it because I wanted them to be still kind of the same design as if they were still one piece of cardstock. Can you see that design? I hope you can see that it is still as if it was still in the embossing folder. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to adhere these to my card front, just kind of equally spaced. So I'm gonna lay them out so that I can see where they are. Now, if you are doing this kind of a card front and you have an uneven, number of elements. So if I had three elements or five elements, 
I would say put adhere the center one first and then work your way out. Okay, but or the center one first, then the ends, and then fill in the center. Okay, with the even ones, there really isn't much percentage in that. So what I do is I'm getting them kind of lined up where I think they're going to be. And they're floating on their dimensionals right now. Okay, so they are ready to be adhered right in place. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to adhere each end and then fill in the center. All right, and I'm gonna use my finely calibrated, um, oh, Melanie, I love this folder. What's holding you up on it? I think it's got wonderful texture. Um, and that's always nice when you're trying to add a little texture. I think it, it helps because there's plenty of it. All right, so then I'm just going to use my tweezers to help me with my fingers. And I'm going to put that on, and I am not pressing it down. I'm just laying it in place so that it starts to hold still. But if I need to wiggle it, I still kind of can. Did, did that make sense? All right, so let's pick this up. We'll get these off. Aren't you glad I dimensionalized these first? At least we're part way down there. Yeah, this suite is wonderful. The paper is spectacular. Hopefully it'll be part of the DSP sale next week. Now I'm just trying to kind of eyeball this top line and this top line and get a similar edge here that I have over here and straight, okay? And again, I'm laying it down without pushing it down because I don't want it to be solidly in place until I'm really sure that's where I need it, okay? So is this the easiest kind of card front to do? No, but it's... It's mostly just kind of persnickety. It's not terribly difficult. It's just kind of persnickety. And then we're going to put that back in place, kind of just eyeballing it, make the top equal to the top of the, the panel next to it. Come on, let go. You know you want to. There we go. All righty. Boy, we've been watching, that was a heck of a thing down in Florida t this week, yesterday, this morning, early this morning. My goodness. Something, something, something. Hey, Lori. Um, it's always interesting watching the dogs do their work. They, uh, I'm going to pull this to me just a little bit, sorry, just because I want to be sure that's kind of lined up. Come on now. Come on, man. There we go. All right, so I'm pretty happy with that. And so I'll go ahead and just give it a little push to adhere everything down. Okay, the next layer is one of the paper lattices. And I actually, I just kind of cut it in half. And then I like to trim up the edges. So I'm just taking my snips and I'm, I'm cutting all these little prongy things off. Okay. And so you can make a panel really the size that you want it. I do like it to be cut at a, like a, a spot, you know what I mean? As opposed to being cut like here. I want it to look finished on the edges. All right, and then we'll just fix that a little bit. And then I'll just take a little, yes, yes, uh, a, a condominium. They've got 51 people missing right now. I think they've got only, there's one dead and several have been to the hospital or in the hospital. Um, it is a mess. When I first saw it this morning, uh, you know, I just saw the picture. I, I truly believed it was a terrorist attack. It looks like, well, to be quite honest, the side of it looks like the, Edward Murrow building from way back in Oklahoma City. That's what it looked like to me. And then they showed a video of it collapsing, kind of a slow motion video. And it was, um, it, well, we'll see what comes, but I don't know. It didn't look very good. All right, so now I'm just going to adhere this to my card front. 
and then we'll start the fun. We've kind of got the cake made, so now we will start decorating. And I've only got glue where those little solid doohickeys are, right there like that. Yeah, it's pretty amazing that anybody's alive. Nobody will, I don't, I, yeah, it would be surprising if anyone else is, sort comes out alive. All right, now I have done a little pre-cutting, but I wanna show you the technique. So, so I'm gonna do a couple for you. I used the, <clears throat> this image, it looks like it's separate, <coughs> excuse me, it looks like it's separate, but this is all one image as you can see here. So I've inked that with pear pizzazz and stamped it out, stamped it and cut it out. And then I also stamped the your as sentiment in Calypso Coral and I cut that with the handy uh, label die that is in the peach die set. Okay, and then I made a few peaches and we're going to make a few more of the peaches except I thought it would be fun instead of six peaches, I'm gonna do three peaches and I'm gonna make three flowers. It's the same technique, but it's flowers instead of peaches. So I thought that would be kind of fun. So let me show you how to how I did this. First off, we will ink up our um, leaves. And I'm gonna use Pear Pizzazz and I'm gonna use a blender pen instead of tapping on there and then maybe like stamping off because sometimes stamping off on photopolymers doesn't work so great. So what I do is I color my stamp with my blender brush, my blending brush, like that. And you could, if you wanted, don't have to, but you could, you could use another brush and add a little bit of shading with maybe some garden green. And heck, what the heck? Let's show you that and see how that comes out. So let's see, this looks like garden green, close enough. So all I do is just tap, 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 and then just kind of tap around on the edges of my, of my leaves a little bit, just to add a little shading, a little different color, a little variegation, okay? I'm gonna put that back. And I'm gonna put this back before I have an ink catastrophe. Do the flowers line up with the leaves too? Yeah, you can just put them right in there just like the just like the peaches. Okay, and then I'm gonna stamp this right here on this piece of basic white. And you can see, so this one was without any shading and this one was with. So just a different look for you. One thing I will tell you is if I was gonna do this again, you want to clean off your stamp between your shadings, okay? Because you are tapping, you're getting, you, you, you're you not tapping in your ink, but you want to not muddy. So you're gonna clean off your stamp and then you're going to start with your base color and add your, sh your shading, okay? But we're not gonna do any more. I'm gonna make some um, flowers. Uh, and this is the same technique that I used for my peaches, only, I'm gonna do it with flowers on this one. So we'll have a slightly different card. This technique is a tiny bit different in that I'm going to actually stamp, uh, ink the stamp by tapping the ink pad as normal. And then I'm going to take my Calypso Coral ink pad and a blender pen and add some little bits of color around the edges. Okay. So the more you do it, the more color you have, which means the more Calypso Coral it'll be and less pale papaya. All right, so let's see how that looks. Ooh, pretty. And then I'm going to cut these up. And I'm going to go off screen real quick like a bunny and use this die for the leaves and this die for the mm, flowers. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Stay here. Your program will resume shortly. All right. So you guys, 
um, let me just make sure you see how these work. You know, these dies, when you're lining up your dies, you just want to put the very edge of the die on the edge of your leaves. So you kind of want to just barely kiss the edges of your image. Okay, remember the old style? You used to have a, a border around your image, so you were trying to work the border. On these, you want to work the actual image itself. Does that make sense? Okay, once again, into the breach. Right. Now we'll cut out some leaves and some flowers. I'm not going to do them both at the same time because that's a surefire way to get an uneven cut because one or the other of those dies will wiggle for sure. I suppose I could pull out a sticky note. Okay. So there's our leaves and then we'll get our flowers going. And I'm going to be back to the die cutter one more time before we're done because I'm going to cut out my peach, but I want to um, I want to show you that as well because you know that's how I am. I'm a showy kind of person. Yeah, I'm a shower. I'm a shower. All right. Oh, you know what? This is going to give me a chance to use even more of my in-color gems because I can put them in the middle of my flowers. <laughs> That'll be fun. I like the in-color gems a lot. They're one of my favoriteest things. Okay, so let's see where we're getting. Right now, we're going to be looking at mm, roughly this. And we're going to divide up our peaches little bit. Maybe going to have a peach here, or no, a peach here, and a peach here, and then we'll put a flower here, and a flower there. I feel like saying, I, I have to say it, everywhere a flower, flower, old McDonald had a peach tree. Ha, 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 I'm killing myself. Okay. So those will go like so, and you can, that's, I mean, that's a rough estimate because we're going to get our peach in. Okay, so for sentiment, what I thought would be fun, and I thought it enough that I actually did it, I'm going to stamp my peach. Oh, good, you're back, Glenda, good. I'm going to stamp the big peach, make sure I've cleaned it off, <clears throat> and I'm going to ink in pale papaya. And then I will uh, shade it with Calypso Coral. And again, it's up to you how ripe your peach is. The riper it is, the more of the Calypso you're going to want to use. And I totally did that backwards. I didn't even do it right. So I don't like it. So I'm going to start over because I didn't even follow my own technique. What in the world, Mary? <clears throat> My brain just went doink. Okay, so we're going to try again. Do it this way. That previous way you saw, don't do it like that. Please don't do it like that. That's not right. Let me see if I can get that off of there or if it's going to be. Yeah, it's just a little quick. Okay. Don't do it the way I did it. Don't be like me. Ink with the pale papaya and then use your blending brush to add your Calypso Coral. The same is still true. The more ripe you want your peach, the more Calypso Coral you're going to put in. Okay. Now we're talking and cooking with gas. Okay. So there's my peach. And on another piece, correct. The riper the peach, the juicier it is and the messier you will get. This is a true statement. Okay, now I'm going to pull out another piece of this. We're going to do us up a, a leaf. And I really like how that garden green looks, so I'm going to do it like that again. I'm going to ink with pear pizzazz and then put a little bit of the garden green on there because I liked that. I liked that. And this is just the little top 
like the top doohickey. Okay, like so. Okay, now I'm gonna take these and cut them both out with their die. So one more time, I will be right back. And I promise this is probably the last time I have to do this unless I mess up my sentiment. At which time, I'll be back to the cutting machine. Which is like being back to the drawing board, only I, it's not a board and I'm not drawing. So, you know, it's exactly like that except for the differences. So... You guys know that today's free shipping, right? Free shipping. Those are like, that's like the clarion call for me. Free shipping. Sign me up, Batman, for free shipping. And also, because I extended it, you can still get double peppermints from me. So that's kind of a double whammy of goodness. A double whammy of goodness. Now I'm cutting out my peach, my large peach. <clears throat> this peach is reminding me of the sticker they give you when you vote in Georgia. <laughs> Except there it says I voted and this one isn't going to say that. This one is going to say sweet as a peach. Let's see, my little peaches look upside down. No, these are right side up. They're just pointing up on their branch. I mean, normally you might see them pointing down, but I'm taking a little artistic license here. They're going the right way. It's not like pansies. I got this one right. I got this one right, I'm pretty sure. Okay. <clears throat> so what's going to happen here is I'm going to adhere my little peach top right there like that, and I'm going to use that as my actual sentiment label. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp <clears throat> sweet as a peach on here. But what I want to do, and the reason I didn't cut, I didn't stamp it before I cut it is because I want to put it on my card and be sure I'm getting the orientation of my peach right. Because I, I might want to put my peach at a jaunty angle like that, but I still want the sentiment to be straight. Gotcha? Are you picking up what I'm putting down? So what I'm going to do now that I have that laid out is I'm just going to pick up the card and move it because it's always dangerous using ink. Buy your card. Ask me how I know that. <clears throat> but I know that I want it like that, and so I'm just going to stamp the sentiment like so. Just like that. You're eating a peach while you're watching me. That's That feels like a, a space-time continuum thing. I don't know. That feels like Doctor Who kind of level stuff. Okay. So I'm liking this layout. I'll go ahead and adhere my peach top to my peach. Let's get that out of the way before I have an accident. Just going to use a little liquid glue and adhere this on. Like so. And then he can just sit over here and dry while I put everything else together. So we'll start with our levers. Put our levers on with a little bit of liquid glue. And I'm gonna go about there. And we'll get the other levers on. Slide that under there like that. There we go. <clears throat> okay. So then we're going to, I'm going to do a little bit of dimensionalizing. What I want to do is I'm going to dimensionalize a couple of the peaches that are, and a couple of the, let me just double check what I wanted to, to dimensionalize here, okay? Let's see, I got to put this back in place. And then we're going to put this on. This is your as sweet as a peach, like so. 
So that way I can kind of see where everything is going to go and what could be dimensionalized and what could not, what should not. How about that? Let me rephrase the could and the would and the should. Obviously, anything can be dimensionalized. There's no such thing as too many dimensionals, I don't think. But, you know, I could be wrong. All right. So basically, I'm going to dimensionalize everything, really, but this one right here for this card. Okay? So we'll just put some a dimensional on. And I'm going to put a little tiny dab of glue right there because that needs to lay down so that it works right. Lay down. Lay down, leaf. Lay down, leafy. We'll put that on there to help it hold. <coughs> Marshmallow mocha. I'm, li I'm liking that. That sounds uh, really good. Really good, actually. Okay. And let's see. Where else am I? I'm going to put a dimensional on here. And we'll give this up. It doesn't want to stay. Come on now. Holding. See when you get anxious and and uh, in a hurry, glue doesn't hold. It's just the way. It's just the way it works. It doesn't hold until it does, and then when it does, it does. When it do, it do, and you know when it's doing it because it's done it. I am nothing if not profound. Mm -hmm. I am very, very profound. Alrighty. I'll put that one on like so. And then actually, I think I may put him on with glue instead of dimensionals, now that I see it better. Okay. And this one we're going to glue. Like so. And this one will have a dimensional. Now, I have to ask, where did you get a marshmallow mocha? Did you make it? Because, um... Yeah, that sounds really good. That sounds really, really good. Really, really good. Put that there. And then we'll put this last peach up here. There we go. All right. And then this guy is going to be on with liquid glue. like that. And then I'm going to use a little bit of dimensionals, as in two, two little half of dimensionals on the back of my um, sentiment. Now look what I'm doing, okay? And I, there's a method to the madness. I'm going to put the two dimensionals over here and nothing over here. And you will see why in just one second. If you looked at my card and you remember what it had, you, you probably already know why. Okay, so that's ready. And now I'm going to take and make a little tiny linen thread bow. Not a double bow, not a fancy bow, just a bow. Your basic old bow. This would just be a bow, Bob. Anybody know the <laughs> game show reference that I just made? All right. And I'm going to put that little guy right there like that on the stem like so and then this little dude will set right over the top of it hence the reason i don't want stampin dimensionals over here so that it can just rest on the knot everybody following you tracking okay a little bit of liquid glue could also use a glue dot but i like to sit and hold that oh no i have a favorite espresso stand here in moses lake washington nice Nice! Two blueberry custard pies. Oh, man! And only two pieces left? Oh, my goodness! Mmm! Choice of mango or blackberries to go with your Happy Meal. I feel you, kid. I feel you. All right, now we'll just pop this on, and then I can get, I can get busy with some jewels, and we'll be done with the outside, and we'll make our inside, and be done, ske. All right, so I'm just going to put that on. I'm going to straighten this up so I have some shot of that being sort of straight. Because, you know, sort of is better than not at all. 
and then I'll go ahead and cut those little guys off. And I'm going to use a couple, three or 12, maybe not 12, probably not 12, because 12 would be overkill, right? I'm going to use some of the um, 2021, 2023 in color jewels. And since I have flowers on this one, I'm going to put a, a jewel in the center. I'll use a large jewel for the two bigger flowers and a small jewel for the small flower. And then I'm going to put one of the small ones on my sentiment. And then I'm going to see, I get to use a bunch of them now because I made flowers. Yay. Put a couple over here. And then one down here. No. Nope. Yeah. Right there. All right. And there is our card front. So you can see it's just the tiniest bit different. All the same materials, all the same techniques, just used flowers instead of peaches. I kind of like this one better. I'm just saying. All right. All right. Now for the inside, I used my normal size. So that means four by five and a quarter and three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. And in the center of that, I'm going to stamp my sentiment in early espresso. If you preferred, you could also use Calypso Coral, but I like the, uh, the contrast a little bit. I prefer it since I've put my peach over the top. I think it would be too much peach. So we'll just stamp this here like so. There we go. And then we're going to put our peach on and I'm gonna pull my, my envelope out so that I can be, you know, real efficient and stuff because I am nothing if not efficient. Clean off my large peach stamp and get out my two ink pads so that maybe I do the technique right. I mean, you know, third time's a charm. Ink up with pale papaya and then use my blending brush to make it as juicy as you want. As Rosie pointed out, the more Calypso coral, the riper it is and the juicier and messier you are. And so I'm gonna take that then and stamp it right over the top of the sentiment, like so. And then we'll clean that off again and repeat on the front of the envelope. Don't forget your envelopes, you guys. Hashtag no naked envelopes. You know, these are your first impression. This is what your recipient sees first. So help them know what much what fun is coming on the inside of the card you're sending. All right. Thank you, Lori. I appreciate it. I do like some layers. I'm not going to lie. I'm a layer girl. Cards with only one layer. The one layer challenges. Have you ever noticed that I hardly ever do a one layer challenge because it makes me jittery. I just, yeah, I just don't like it. I just don't like it, I'm saying. All right, so we're gonna do, I'm really loving the garden green ad, so I'm gonna do that again too. All right, we'll ink up our peach leaves top, inking first with pear pizzazz, add a little bit of shading with the garden green and add it to the card front. I probably ought to put it on kind of straight and it's okay if it hangs off. In fact, it's preferable. Clean your stamp and then we'll do the same exact Amundo thing on the inside of the card. Okay, and then we'll add this to this pitch right here. Perfect. Uh, perfect. I love a photopolymer stamp set, especially one that just lines up so perfectly. Hi, Julie. Yay, Bree. Yay. S keep going. You're doing awesome. That is amazing. Congratulations. All right, and now I'm going to adhere this on to my early espresso card 
mat. Card mat. You know I was trying to say the wrong thing, right? I tried to cover it up there, but I didn't very well. Especially since I then went right into confessing that I had screwed it up. And I have a pale papaya card base. Oop, I probably ought to put it in right side up. What do you think? What think you? Put it in right side up or should I just go ahead and have fun with it and put it in wrong side down? All right, and then we'll Dimensionalize this. Where are you, dimensionals? There you are. And it'll be pretty close to done. We'll just put a little DSP on the envelope flap and be ready to roll. We'll be rolling, rolling, rolling. Get those peaches flowing, flow, roll on. Alrighty. Oh, somebody ought to do like a study of the amount of time each video is, has dedicated to removing dimen dimensional covers. Probably could get a government grant for that. That's important stuff. Dimensionals as a time sink in modern day crafting. Paper by Mary. Okay. And then we'll put this on here like so. Trying to make it straightish, straightish as we can get it. And let's see, somewhere around here, there it is. And then we'll put some of the DSP on our envelope flap. And this one will be one for the books. All right. There we go. A quick fussy cut around the edge of the envelope. Alrighty. So, two cards, pretty close to identical. The only difference is one tree is a little more grown out than the other. See, this one's still got leaf flowers getting ready to be peaches, and this one is all peaches. So, you can pick, make it however you like, flowers, peaches, flowers, and peaches, however works for you. One way or the other, I hope that you will get this. Remember, free shipping ends at 11.59 p.m. Mountain Time tonight. So that's, uh, you know, like 2 in the morning Eastern Time. And I appreciate you spending part of your day with me. I hope to see you on Saturday for my Facebook Live at 7 p.m. And for those of you who are into such things, I hope to see you this afternoon uh, this evening on my Zoom, the craft room. All right, guys, we'll see ya. Thanks. Bye.